My name is Adam Stocken. I'm the Northern New England Bridge Lead, as well as the National ABC Technical Resource Lead for WSP. And uh, we're going to go through this project uh, in New Haven, Vermont. So for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, Northern New England here, uh, actually all of New England, um, this project was located basically right in the middle of Vermont. Uh, key elements here, uh, population in, of the town of New Haven is 1,700 people, and oddly enough, uh, 1,600 uh, daily traffic. Uh, so that's kind of unique. Uh, here's the zoom in of the project. Uh, the star locates where the bridge is. Note the uh, river alignment and coming right around the bend there, as well as the confluence of Muddy Brook and the location of Halpin Road and the general alignment of this uh, of River Road. The existing conditions of the bridge I uh, was built in 1935. You can see uh, the beautiful structure here off to the right hand side. Uh, it's 20 feet curb to curb and uh, 176 feet long with this uh, beautiful ancillary snowmobile bridge uh, that's built next to it, basically cantilevered off the existing steel bridge. A little uh, scary to walk on, to be honest. Uh, so this is what's gonna be replaced. So there were some uh, design details here, uh, site conditions that we needed to work with. So first is the alignment. Uh, it's on a vertical and horizontal curve. And you can just barely see in that top picture, uh, the green sign peeking out over the guardrail of Halpin Road. And that vehicle that you see is just turning out of the road. It's very poor sight distance. Uh, the photo below, also is a picture of the bridge and you can see the curve and how poor it is, especially along the inside of the curve with the guardrail. Uh, so they did wanna maintain snowmobile access for the future. So we needed to allot for that in our design. Hydraulics were extremely challenging at this location. This is in a valley. So basically the bridge was the high point in the valley. Uh, so Halpin Road uh, flooded frequently. Uh, this is, uh, you can see debris build up underneath this structure. Uh, and it was just a, a very poor hydraulic condition here, not only from the perspective of hydraulic opening, but you can see uh, two wall piers that were in the river right along the bend of the river, which caused a lot of debris to build up uh, and, and caused many problems for the town. So uh, geotech conditions were also very poor. Uh, there was uh, 40 to 75 feet of very soft clay. And so even going down 120 feet, we didn't hit any bedrock and the scour potential was about 15 feet. Uh, so these are some of the site conditions that we needed to uh, address in our design. And also we had some public input meetings. Uh, we, we presented many uh, different choices based on cost and others. And it was deemed that a bridge closure uh, for about two and a half months would be the, the best solution for the town. So I'll dive a little bit more into some design details here for the proposed structure. So the superstructure, uh, a span length of 164.35 feet, 730 foot radius, uh, which required a 4% super elevation, uh, but we were able to get rid of the 50 degree skew, which was nice. You can see here in the photo, the sweep of those uh, steel beams. Uh, the, the typical section here is a 32 and a half feet out to out. I uh, won't go through all these stats here, but we did end up deciding to metallize the steel. Uh, that was the best solution uh, for long-term conditions, especially with the proximity of the water to the low court of the bridge. Superstructure, we needed to go with deep foundations due to the poor soils. Uh, we utilized precast integral abutments on 75 foot H piles and uh, a monstrous eight foot diameter monoshaft uh, uh, 120 foot deep, which supported a six foot column and our precast cap. Uh, but this was a, a great solution from a hydraulic situation as then we only had the one column in the river as opposed to the two wall piers. You can see here, uh, that's the drilled shaft in the top photo and in the bottom photo, the integral abutments being placed over the steel pipe piles, or sorry, uh, H piles. Uh, so this bridge uh, was integral. So there were no joints on this bridge. It was preferred for VTRANS uh, with a curve and uh, all the various uh, elements that were involved with this. We needed to do a refined analysis, uh, but it was important that we uh, maintain this bridge as an integral for our design. Uh, we also had precast abutments and wings. I mentioned uh, the precast cap over these uh, corrugated pipes uh, that were in the middle of the precast members that the H piles basically slid into and then we filled with uh, concrete. 
Uh, so this is sort of the crown jewel of the whole project, in my opinion, uh, as a precast pier cap. Uh, this was a, an integral pier cap as well. As you can see, the, uh, the cap, typically the beams would sit on top of the cap, but instead we moved the cap up uh, to prevent, you know, this basically would have caused a paddle effect in the, in the water. Uh, so we moved everything up to the superstructure as tight as we could. Uh, this required uh, six foot stubs on either side. Uh, of this precast cap so that we could ship it. <clears throat> so this cap was put together. Uh, well, it was fabricated in Maine uh, at Casco Bay and then brought over to Vermont to uh, Carrero, where, which is a precast yard where they assembled the steel uh, with, the, um, with everything assembled and all bolted up, ready to go. And then they came in and they poured the integral cap on site uh, with everything uh, you know, put together. And then they disassembled everything so that they were left with this piece here in the, in the center picture, especially you can see the, the piece, the singular piece that will be placed in the field. Uh, we also hired uh, an independent engineer, the contractor hired an independent engineer uh, to work with the steel fabricator and the precaster so there weren't fingers being pointed at whose responsibility it was. And this helped uh, with that coordination between those two entities. Uh, so for this precast cap, for the connection, we tried to go with a simplistic approach. Uh, so we had uh, six inch uh, steel corrugated um, conduits that went all the way through the precast member down into the column. Uh, and then those were filled with grout. <clears throat> this is a, a detail of that pier cap. So you can see the shaded area. That is the precast um, member that you've seen in the photos. The green is uh, our cast in place overlay as well as the red there, which is the wearing surface. And, and there's a lot going on here. I won't get into great detail, but just to give you an idea of what this looked like. Uh, this is an actual picture from in the field. So you can see the corrugated pipe for the column dowels, the circular ties that were going around those dowels. Um, the, uh, excuse me a moment while I move my, there we go. The top flange, uh, main cap reinforcing, which did pass through those steel girders the shear studs and the hoops around those stud matrix, matrices. So uh, as far as the column to precast connection, it was only a two inch grout pad with a three quarter inch edge distance. So it's a very simplistic approach. Again, uh, all with the intent to limit um, you know, int water intrusion and have long-term durability. So obviously this required a lot of complex analysis, which could be a 30 minute presentation all on its own. So. <clears throat> just to give an overview of what was taken into account here, as well as all of the typical design elements that we needed to uh, take care of. We also had to come up with a construction schedule uh, to go along with the two and a half months that we told the town uh, that we'd build this bridge. So uh, we created task by task schedule, uh, which we tried to balance our practical approach to pushing the contractor because you never want to have the contractor out there with lots of time on his hands. Uh, the public's not too happy when you have people standing around. They wonder why the bridge is closed. So it was pretty aggressive. <clears throat> and we also had an incentive disincentive clause to encourage the contractor to move forward as quickly as he can. So we ultimately came up with a 72 day closure. Excuse me a moment. <clears throat> so now we'll get into the construction photos here. And I'm just gonna kind of uh, briefly go through these. <clears throat> So uh, I also want you to take note here, many of these photos have dates here in this uh, bottom right-hand corner, I circled the dates so you can kind of follow through as I show these pictures. <clears throat> so first, while the bridge was still open, we came in and built uh, all the temporary work. So this was a, a roadway to go in and, and install the drilled shaft. <clears throat> then the bridge was closed and we continued the bridge removal preparation. Superstructure removal. Everybody loves pictures of uh, steel getting taken down and concrete being busted up. It's exciting. Excuse me again. <coughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> so these are the drilled shafts. Again, eight foot diameter shafts that were brought in, which uh, was interesting. Consider this was a small local town in the middle of Vermont. So mobilization was definitely uh, a significant cost here, but it still uh, was deemed worthy and uh, necessary. 
So here they are welding those drilled shaft members in place. Because uh, remember, again, this is 120 feet total. <coughs> you can see the drill here and uh, reference of the, the people standing next to it, how big this is, and the rebar cages that had to be trucked in. Here are the rebar cages being placed down in the hole. Again, you can see this placement of the drilled shaft, and then you can also see the steel H piles that were being driven at the same time. Here we, got, here we go with the integral abutments, uh, steel H piles. They were cut off. They brought in the precast members that were placed over top, filled with high early strength concrete. This is the connection that you're looking at in the right-hand picture of the integral abutment. <clears throat> The pier column, you can see those steel corrugated pipes. <coughs> Notice the date here, July 18th. Meanwhile, at the yard, everything's being erected. The precast cap is being uh, cast. Here we go. The uh, cap's ready to be placed. You can visibly see those six foot stubs coming out on either side. The steel is flown into place. Approach slabs are put down and voila, the bridge is open 72 days later. So here we are with a comparison, a similar uh, picture, left and right before and after. It's pretty clear here that we're greatly um, addressing the hydraulic issues at this location. So just some quick conclusions, <coughs> excuse me again, sorry. Uh, we promised the town that there was gonna be no closure during school, uh, which we were able to accomplish that 72 days was about the window that we had. Uh, again, I mentioned the improved hydraulic condition and the estimated cost, uh, our engineer's cost versus the construction cost, there was about a 5% difference. So we were pretty close on that. And we think that uh, the precast supply demand may have been uh, what accounted for that 5%. There's a lot of precast going on in Vermont at this time. So we balanced the cost, uh, the pace, and the public's needs to come up with this project. And we feel it was, you know, it's one of these bridges you look at. Uh, if you're not a bridge engineer, you probably go, wow, this looks pretty simple. Uh, you know, not much going on here. Pretty boring. Uh, but if you understand anything about bridges, uh, you realize there's a lot of internal stresses going on here that need to be accounted for. Uh, you know, I think it's a simple and elegant structure. And uh, one of the best compliments that we received was from the chief engineer of VTrans who uh, went out <clears throat> on a final inspection and he made the comment, wow, this is how bridges should be built. This is going to last a long time. Um, accomplishments. Uh, just here, the B-Trans, uh, the construction company, Carrera, Casco Bay, working together uh, to come up with a, a plan of attack to develop and fabricate the pier cap. And uh, this is my contact information. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, take a quick screen grab and uh, let me know if you have anything. You can put it in the chat box or uh, touch base with me at any time. So uh, thank you very much.